After the shocks of 2020, the big question for 2021 is, are we ready to bounce back? How do businesses reopen and jobs return? I'm Kareem Photo, And I'm Estelle Leo. And in this talk, we are going to explain how a deep dive into balance sheets can give us a really good sense of where we are going. First, let's go back a decade to the global financial crisis. It's an example of what we economists like to call a balance sheet recession. In other words, people and businesses lost the value of a lot of what they owned, became increasingly indebted, and many on the verge of bankruptcy. During that crisis, economies in the European Union and the UK contracted sharply. Stock markets tanked, property prices plunged, banks stopped lending, companies lost sales, and people lost jobs. Many corporates and households suddenly ran out of money to pay their debt. Widespread defaults led to businesses closing down one after another. In our analysis, we looked at the corporate sector's balance sheets in the same period, using the combination of two indicators. One is liquidity, which shows the ability of a company to pay its immediate bills in the short term. The other is leverage, which takes a longer view and compares how much a company has borrowed against its ability to pay. Back at our graph, the green line shows the sharp deterioration of corporate balance sheets during that crisis. And one of the things about a balance sheet recession is that it takes a really long time to recover. So what we wanted to know was, as the COVID crisis hit, were we heading into another balance sheet recession in Europe? And did that mean, just like 10 years ago, another long, slow recovery? To get a clear picture of this, a team of 12 economists from the IMF's European department crunched over a million pieces of European Central Bank data over several months. Now, if you remember, last year, near the start of the crisis, there was an expectation of a wave of corporate defaults that would come after lockdowns were introduced and the company's revenues started to take a hit. These defaults would in turn affect households through higher unemployment and damage the quality of the assets in the banking sector. But as 2020 dragged on, we found that companies and households, on aggregate, were more resilient than initially feared. What this chart tells us is that, well, corporate sector balance sheets in Europe haven't really deteriorated. And this was quite surprising, that given the scale of the economic shock, there has been no real budge in the corporate or household sector's balance sheet so far. The net wealth of households have in fact increased as they deposited more money in banks. These sector-wide observations may mask differences at the individual level, particularly cash-strapped firms and households hardest hit by the pandemic. Overall, what has caused this divergence from history? On one hand, most economies entered this crisis on a stronger footing than the past. In addition, we argue that the expected losses in the private sector have mostly shifted to the public sector. You can see how this worked in practice with this illustration, which shows the trilemma of balance sheets. So here we have the financial sector, the public sector, and the non-financial private sector. The trilemma of balance sheets suggests that when a shock hits one of these sectors, the losses can be shifted to the balance sheets of the other two sectors, but have to eventually show up in at least one economic sector. The COVID shock first hit corporates and households directly. Business revenues plummeted and household incomes were vulnerable to job losses. Their balance sheets would then deteriorate. In turn, the quality of banks' assets would also deteriorate. But instead, the governments and the central banks stepped in to the rescue. For example, providing tax deferrals, supporting wage payments to workers, expanding asset purchase programs, and introducing moratoria on low repayments and providing loan guarantees. All of a sudden, you see this shift of losses from the real economy to the balance sheet of the public sector. Over the first three quarters of 2020, all EU governments have seen a sharp increase of their public debt, ranging from 3% of GDP to 25.5% of GDP. Of course, many governments in Europe were able to support the real economy because they entered this crisis from a position of relative strength 
compared to 10 years ago. And many central banks have pledged to buy government debt to keep borrowing costs low. But was all this the right thing to do? The short answer, so far, is yes. In the future, as more and more people get vaccinated and economic recoveries gradually take shape, policy support will need to change to target the most affected sectors. And this will gradually allow market forces to determine the efficient reallocation of resources. But the pandemic is still with us. Preserving the productive capacity of the private sector continues to be the priority while uncertainty remains high. And the public sector has a stronger capacity to absorb the economy's losses. The path ahead presents a delicate balancing act. Mm -hmm.